I'm going to be getting married here soon. Sorry for getting married before you, Brenda. Which is sad, because I'm five years younger than you. So you've decided to get married? Congratulations on that. I'm not really sure there's a need for you to be comparing myself to you, but it's great to hear that things have been going so well in your relationship. You're 35 years old now, right? By this point, I'd say you're pretty much past your prime. You don't have to say things like that. What do you think any of that accomplishes? Well, I happen to still be 30 years old, and my wife is 27 years old. Isn't this crazy for you to hear right now? Aiden, I'd be watching my mouth if I were you. I understand that you're so excited and happy to be getting married, but that does not give you permission to start bashing me like that, okay? Bashing you? All I'm doing is saying the truth about you right now. I just think it's great that I'm going to be getting married to a woman that's even younger than myself. If you wanted to be in the same boat as she is when the wedding happens, then you're going to need to find yourself a man in his 40s soon. Why are you mentioning that? My life has nothing to do with what you think, right? So, would you please stop it with all that jabbering on about my life? I'm not jabbering on about anything. I'm just trying to make it obvious to you that I want you to try a little more is all. Is it not embarrassing to come in second place to me in everything? What do you mean, Aiden? This is not some kind of competition, alright? I really want to know why you're going on and on about things like this. Aren't you getting really worked up and afraid right now because your little brother's getting married before you? If I were in your shoes right now, I'd be freaking out. Being the oldest sibling, yet still not having a partner worth marrying yet? And considering you're a woman, isn't that embarrassing to you? The only thing I'm worried about right now is that my little brother thinks the same way a man in the 1920s would have been thinking about things. We live in the 21st century now, and that kind of worry about marrying while one is young needs to stop. What the heck? What are you trying to get at there? If you don't understand what I'm saying, then maybe you need to put a little more thought into it. I don't want to talk with you anymore, okay? Just leave me alone and think about the things you've just said to me and why they'd all make me want to stop talking. Do you remember the last time you were acting out like this? You started to make fun of Dad and call him all sorts of names. Is that when I made fun of him? always forgetting things, and asked him if he was already going crazy, or something like that. Was that really such a big deal to all of you? Because it wasn't. You all are just a bunch of tight asses. I think we are all having to put up with a lot from you recently, because you've only become a lot worse when it comes to being kind. What do you mean, putting up with? I'm a very good son to both mom and dad, aren't I? I happen to be getting married early on. Very different from someone else in the family, right? That's what I mean. I get that you're the kind of person to always think about yourself before anyone else and never think before you speak. But just remember that you should be thankful for all of us around you. If you start to forget that, then you'll be in for loads of trouble. When are you planning on coming here? What? Planning on coming to what? Huh? What do you mean by that? Don't tell me you've forgotten what day it is. You would never know a show on a day like today, right? So, when are you coming? What would I have forgotten about, Aiden? What do you mean, when I am coming? Where am I supposed to be going to right now? Was there something happening today that I need to be at? Huh? You're lying, right? Are you being serious with me right now about that? What is going on here? I literally have no idea what you keep going on about. Is this some kind of joke? You're the one that seems to be joking right now. But I want you to stop that. You're going to piss me off if you keep that going. Which would be a waste on a day like today. No, seriously, Aiden. 
I have no clue what you keep talking about. Coming out of nowhere like that and sending me all these strange messages is not funny. You're just starting to annoy me is all. Huh? So what you're telling me is that you really did forget about what today is? Are you freaking kidding me, Brenda? I'm just asking you to explain to me what's going on here for crying out loud. If my family no-shows on the day of my wedding, I'm going to cut ties with all of you! Stop it with that stupid joke already, god dang it! You are about to make me go crazy with the way you're acting right now. What? Today's your wedding? Are you freaking kidding me? There's no freaking way. So you really did forget about today. Forgetting about your little brother's wedding like that? No, hold on, just wait a second. What are you actually talking about right now? The fact that I have as horrible of a person as you as my older sister makes me want to give up. No showing on the day of your only sibling's wedding? Like that is screwed up! If you don't get over here right now, then I'm going to cut ties with you and the whole family! The date that's on your invitation is saying the wedding is tomorrow. What? You can get mad all you want for not staying level-headed and listening to me when I said I had no clue what you were going on about. But what I just said is a fact. I just took another look at the invitation and just as I thought, it says your wedding is tomorrow. So your wedding should be tomorrow, right? What are you going on about? You think an excuse like that is going to work on me? There's no way I'm the one who's mistaken here. Come on now. Take a look for yourself, why don't you? Perhaps the invitation you sent me has the wrong date on it? I'm not sure who all else might have gotten a misprint like this, but if everyone got this same invitation as me, then nobody you invited is going to be coming to that wedding of yours today. Hold on two seconds. I just had a look. You weren't kidding. The date on these invitations are all wrong! So you finally had a look yourself? I'm sure you're standing there looking like an idiot right now, but I wasn't lying about any of that. Who the heck made all these invitations, Aiden? I did. And I went and made dozens of copies of this to send to everyone I wanted here. So, with that being said, everyone you invited thinks that your wedding is tomorrow. This is not good! No way! You're telling me I didn't notice this arrow and sent everyone the invitation? Then that means none of the people I invited are going to show up today! Well, that's what it seems like. Besides yourself, I don't think a single person is going to be showing up that you sent those invitations to. You should have taken a better look at your invitations and had your fiancé look at them as well before sending them all out. If none of the people I invited come today, what's going to happen to the wedding? If there's nobody here to celebrate me, then this wedding will be like hell! At that point, I wouldn't even call that a wedding. <laughs> I'm not sure what's going to happen there, but you're the one that did this to yourself, right? Your fiancé, or... Wife, is it? Wasn't the one to send those out, right? That's right! I was told to be the one to prepare and send them all out. So that's what I did! When it comes to those invitations, the date and place are the two most important parts, so you should have double-checked that! Well, it's too late to tell you that now. Everyone's already received their invites. I want to know what to do here! You're going to have to tell your wife about all of this, right? That should be your first step. You have to let her know about what you've done. You can't just have the wedding and not tell her anything about what's happened. That's a good point. I'll go and tell her about all of this right now. Letting things be would only make things worse later on. I have to go talk to her right now. Good luck, Aiden. Crap! 
She is really upset with me now. I would have been better off not telling her a thing! Had you not told her, the reality of the situation you're in wouldn't have changed. I think it was a good choice letting her know sooner rather than later. And now this means you've taken responsibility for what you've done. Right now she's blaming me for everything, because I was the one that sent them out. If things stay this way, we won't be able to have the wedding because she's so upset with me. What am I going to do about all this? Just a bit ago, you were getting all upset with me and saying you'd cut ties to me, right? And in the end, it was all your fault for this stuff happening. <laughs> you shouldn't. You don't have to add salt to my already fresh wound, okay? Right now, things are pretty tough for me, and I'm going to have to find a way out of this. Can you be a little more kind with your words right now? You're supposed to be my older sister! Come on, you can complain about me all you want, but that's not going to help your current situation any, is it? You should have done a better job checking things over before sending those invitations, right? You had time to do all of that back when making the cards and then receiving them to send out yourself, right? You don't have to tell me all of that now! I get it! But right now, I have no idea what to do, okay? Would you please start giving me some freaking advice instead of talking down about what I've done? Well, when you start asking me to do things in that kind of bossy tone, I really don't want to do anything to help you. I want to know what I should be doing right now, Brenda! If I don't act, then this wedding is going to go nowhere besides being cancelled! I don't care about that. How about for starters, you learn from all this? Learn from this? What is there to learn right now? Oh, please. You know what I'm talking about. Do you have no memory of the way you've always behaved toward me? About all those times you were so selfish around me and didn't give a crap about how what you were doing was affecting me. None of that rings a bell. Behaved? I was... being that mean towards you or something? You picked on me for not being married yet. And you always acted like you were the best because of my situation. I was just telling you the truth. It's a very good thing to be as confident and happy about yourself as you've been. But when you start bringing others down to make yourself look even more attractive, then there's a major problem. You would also pick on my life choices and would even speak badly about mom and dad in front of them. Because you always behaved in that manner around us, I find this to be what you deserve. No matter how horrible of a situation you're in at the moment, I find it totally natural that nobody wants to come and help you. Hold up. Are you really that mad at me right now? Was I really saying that bad of things about you and both mom and dad? The fact that you can't even tell how rude you were being is awful. It's very terrifying, actually. If you're never going to understand that the way you've been acting is wrong, then nobody is ever going to come to your aid when you need them. What? What is wrong with you, Brenda? Another thing, Aiden. When you came over to Mom and Dad's house a little while back, you went and took some of their money, right? Wait, took the money sounds a little bad. I just happened to not have enough money for myself, so I went and borrowed some from them. Why do you know about that to begin with? You borrowed that money? Then what happened to you ever paying them back? Well, that's the thing. I haven't gotten around to that part yet. So then you probably shouldn't say you were borrowing it then yet. Do you even plan on giving them that money back? I do, of course. When? I don't know when just yet. Well, look at that. You don't care to get them that money back. If you cared to, then you would have given them a time frame so that they could hold you accountable. The fact that you are this troubled and always cause problems for the family is probably why you're getting what you deserved now, right? I never meant to do anything wrong, though. I'm sorry, Brenda. What? What are you feeling sorry about? I'm pretty sure you're only saying that to get me to be quiet about all the wrongs you've done to everyone around you, right? 
It's not going to work, so don't even tell me you're sorry again. Hold on, though. I really didn't know that you've been this upset with me. I was just teasing you is all, and there was no greater meaning to it. Even if that was all you meant to do, you still hurt me. You knew that too, because you were poking fun at me for things that one of your age shouldn't be doing. Since you act that way with me so much, I'm sure you act that way with people outside the family as well. I seriously never noticed that any of what I was doing was bad though. That's why I'm being honest when I say I'm sorry. I never meant to hurt you in any way, alright? I want you to understand that, okay? I really do feel sorry about all of that right now. From now on, I promise to think about how I talk with you before I speak. Are you sure you're being serious enough about that? Is it okay for me to believe you then? Please, believe me. I'll make sure that money I got from mom and dad is returned to them as well. I'll even go and apologize to mom and dad as well. I had used too much money on the wedding. It had nothing left to put towards bills and food. So I was just planning on borrowing some from them is all. You stole the ability to retire from dad, you know. Well, I never meant to do that to him. But now that you've said all this, my eyes have been opened. From now on, I'll be more careful of what I do and say, and make sure to take responsibility for my actions. Once again, I'm sorry for never noticing any of this and hurting you. If you've come to understand what I've told you, then that's good. I'm going to give you a call right now. Luckily, you were able to have a good wedding after all that. Brenda, thank you so much for everything. This is all because of you and has nothing to do with me. The fact that you went ahead and called everyone in the family and let them know about the mistake I made, and you talking with the manager of the building and asking them to start the wedding a little later for me. We were able to wait for everyone to come here, and from there, we were able to have this wedding. I am so thankful for all of that. You're welcome. And you'll be thanking me for all that for the rest of your life. I really will. After seeing my little brother begging me to help, I couldn't just sit there, even if you've been such a jackass to Mom, Dad, and I. I wasn't really begging. Well, when you were on the phone with me, you sure sounded like you were begging. Well, that doesn't matter now. Just don't forget anything I've said to you today, okay? If you begin to clean up your act, then I'm sure in no time good things will start to happen to you again. I totally understand that now. From now on, I'll try harder to show you just how thankful I am for everything you've done today. Thank you again, Brenda. Wait, um... Thank you for literally everything, Brenda. If you're still able to apologize and thank me like that now, then that means you still have a chance of being alright. <laughs> I'm actually a bit upset that things turned out this well for you in the end, but... I think this is a good turning point for you. Now... You make sure to treat your wife kindly, okay? In the end, thanks to all that work I put in, the wedding was a success for my brother and his wife, albeit starting two hours after it was planned for. Because of all my effort, I would be thanked by both my brother and his wife for a very long time, showing that they still had not forgotten about what happened. I didn't know how things would end for Aiden, but the fact that he was able to have his eyes open to his actions and learn from them is wonderful. He even came around to paying my dad back for all the money he borrowed before. It seems that everyone is a whole lot more content with my brother now, and you could call this a happy ending for everyone involved. And because of that, I'm a whole lot more relieved than I was before my brother's wedding. Jack, I'm sorry. Can you get takeout or delivery for tonight's dinner? Huh? Why? I don't feel too great. What? You're not better yet? You've been saying you're not feeling well for a while now. It's not like it's a fever, so I can't just get better. 
I always feel like I'm going to throw up or like I'm anemic. I know that pregnancy isn't a sickness, but do you feel like you want to throw up because of the morning sickness? Does that still happen after your stomach gets big? A lot of people only have bad morning sickness in the first trimester, but for others, it continues throughout their pregnancy. But I think it's because I have all this pressure on my stomach. What? Does that mean you're not going to feel better until you give birth? Who knows? I can't say for sure either. But it's not like I feel awful every single day. I still have days where I feel okay. You say that, but Christina, all you've been doing since your pregnancy is sleep. Your excuse is always that you don't feel well. I'm not making excuses. Other pregnant women are walking around or exercising, you know? Why don't you try to walk around the house or something? I've been moving around whenever I can, but the doctors told me that the best thing to do is rest. I guess, but didn't you gain too much weight? You're getting bigger and bigger. Do you think so? The doctors haven't warned me about my weight or anything. I think it just looks that way because of all the puffiness. No, I swear, you got fat. You look like a sea lion when you're sleeping. You don't have to say it like that. It's the truth. You look like a sea lion on the shore. You snore so loud too. The other day, I even praised myself for marrying a woman like you. Okay. But I mean, I think you just don't feel good because you haven't been moving around. There's still time before dinner, so you might feel better by then. Can you make me dinner? I've been out drinking a lot recently, so my diet has been pretty unhealthy. I still feel nauseous when I stand up. That's just how you feel now, isn't it? You'll be fine by the time I come home. Okay, I'll be waiting for a dinner full of vegetables then. Make a healthy meal for me. What? You can't just do that. It's your own fault your diet has been bad. It's because you've been going out drinking. I messaged you because there's a high possibility I won't be able to cook dinner. How should I know? You're a stay-at-home wife that gets to lounge around all day. At least do the household chores that you're responsible for. Are you just going to disregard the fact that I'm pregnant? Look, other pregnant women are going out and doing grocery shopping. Why are you acting like a sick person? You've been slacking off on cleaning recently too. I can tell you know that, right? I've been doing my best when I can. I'm telling you that it's all half-assed. What do you think I'm making you a stay-at-home wife for? I don't like dirty rooms. I'm already stressed from working, so make sure that I can relax at least when I come home. Who do you think is supporting you financially? I'm sorry. I'll do better from now on. You should have just said that in the beginning. If the room is still dirty how it was this morning, I'm going to make you clean until it's spotless. Make sure you clean the bathroom too. Jack, I'm sorry that I couldn't make dinner tonight. It's fine. I'll just get something to eat. Either way, you should have messaged me or something before you slept. You should have told me that there was no dinner. I'm sorry. The house is just as dirty as it was this morning when I left, too. Gosh, it's horrible. I had a fever. I thought I'd get better if I slept, but it just kept getting worse. What? You got sick when you don't even go out? Maybe I caught it when I went grocery shopping a few days ago. You don't even go out regularly, but you had to catch a cold the one time you did go out? Aren't you just full of bad luck? What are you going to do if I get sick too? I'll sleep in the living room tonight. You better. Make sure you get rid of the bacteria in our bedroom too. And change the sheets. I'm sorry, I feel nauseous and don't think I can do that today. What? There's no dinner when I come home from work, and the room is dirty on top of that. Are you even useful at all? Useful? Am I just in your life to do your chores for you? I didn't say that, but are you forgetting that you're a stay-at-home wife? Is a pregnant woman so superior that she doesn't have to do anything? I never acted that way. Well, you are. I'm working every single day while you lounge around at home. You use the excuse that you're sick or that you're pregnant and get to be lazy every day. I'm not lounging around. The child in my stomach is your kid, too. I know that. You don't. Because if you did, you wouldn't be able to say something like this. I'm working hard to financially support you and that child in your stomach. You're the one that doesn't understand how hard I'm working. I do appreciate how hard you work, but I want you to research a little more about pregnancy. Some pregnant women can move around, while others can't at all. It's not like everybody has the exact same symptoms. It's probably your fault because you weren't living a proper life before your pregnancy. 
I bet you were slacking off on the cleaning and everything even before you got pregnant. I wasn't doing that. That's why the room was clean, wasn't it? Who knows? You might have been going out to have fun while you hired a maid or something. I'd never do that. As punishment for not making my dinner, make sure you make the house spotless. I told you, I have a fever. I'm telling you not to slack off on the household chores just because of a fever. Make sure everything is perfect. Oh, and my friends invited me out for drinks, so I'll be home around midnight. If someone has time to go out and have fun, wouldn't a husband normally help out at home? Don't force your standards on me. Besides, I'm allowed to have fun because I'm working hard. You can rest after you complete all of your responsibilities, too. That's... How can you say something like that? I've been living my life thinking about our kid. I've been restricting myself from things like alcohol so that I can have a healthy baby. You've never changed anything in your life even after I got pregnant. You leave all the chores to me and say that I'm worthless if everything isn't done perfectly. I didn't say you were worthless. You asked me whether I'm any use in your life earlier. God, I swear, you're so annoying. I'm going out to have fun, so don't bring down my mood. Did you become hysterical after getting pregnant? You don't do the chores, your attitude is annoying. There's nothing good about you after your pregnancy. I'm over this. What? What now? Are you going to get mad too? All I need to do is do the chores perfectly, right? I know now that it's useless trying to talk to you. Yeah, if you understand, don't try to talk back to me. You really became one annoying woman, didn't you? I'd hate to think this is how you're going to be in the future. Hey, Christina, where are you? Oh, you make me so frustrated. You said you weren't feeling well, but you're not even at home. Where did you go without even cleaning? Your wife isn't here anymore. Huh? What do you mean by your wife? So what? Where are you? Why is the room not clean? Jack, I'm not Christina. I'm talking to Christina's number. What are you even saying? Christina was brought to the hospital. What? You're talking to your mother. Would you care to explain what the hell is going on? Mom? Yeah. Really? If you don't believe me, do you want me to list down all the girls you liked when you were a student? Alright, stop it. So what? Why do you have Christina's phone, Mom? And what do you mean she was brought to the hospital? You made your pregnant wife who had a fever do the cleaning? Christina did the cleaning just like you said and passed out. She used the last of her energy to go outside and call an ambulance. Her fever? I thought it was just a small one. Her fever was almost 104 degrees. She's also pregnant. Why would you make her do the household chores? Plus, I heard that you were out getting drinks. I was just invited to go out when I went out for food. And you were drinking until this late, weren't you? Normally, husbands would stay by their wives in times like this. I can't just not show up to the bar. Is that more important than being with your wife when she's sick with a fever? She's also pregnant. What in the world were you thinking? Why couldn't you even be kind to your own wife? She's lounging around at home normally. It's not bad to make her do the chores. Let her lounge around. She's pregnant. She can't survive without getting ample rest. There are pregnant women who are raising kids on top of their pregnancy and others who are still working. They can do that because they have fewer symptoms and because they have support from the people around them. What did you do to support Christina? I'm working to support her financially. That's the bare minimum. I'll listen to your lectures later. Where is Christina hospitalized right now? Christina asked me not to tell you where she is. What? What you did was that terrible. You have no right to have a wife. Your wife is gone. Christina, please, respond to me. I want to see you in person and apologize properly. Are you still in the hospital? I was released yesterday. Christina, were you okay? I was so worried because you wouldn't contact me. I was in the hospital because I wasn't okay. Well, yeah, but... I contacted you today because I finally made my decision. Decision? I need you to divorce me. What? Excuse me? I can't continue living with you. That's what I decided. So, let's get a divorce. Uh, hold on a minute. A divorce? Because I told you to do the household chores? It was all the things you've been doing to me. I asked you many times to do your research about pregnancy and childbirth. I explained that I couldn't do the cleaning when I didn't feel well, too. 
but you wouldn't try to understand anything I said. Because pregnancy isn't a sickness. It's not. But I'm raising a child while risking my life. There's a possibility I could die while giving birth too. I'm going through all that, but look at how you've been treating me all this time. I'm sorry. My mom lectured me and explained everything to me after what happened. I realize how hard pregnancy is now. It's too late now. Don't say that. I'm going to be better from now on, especially after our child is born. I'm probably never going to forget how you treated me. How you said I was worthless if I don't do the household chores. Or how you told me to make sure the house was spotless when I had a fever. I realized that being with you only stressed me out. I apologize for that, and I'll help you out from now on. Please, don't say you want a divorce. Christina, I married you because I wanted to be with you forever. Then you could have been nicer to me or cared about me a little bit more. I showed my appreciation for how hard you were working every day. But I think a husband and wife need to support each other during times of need. What about the child? Are you going to raise him or her on your own? I'm going to focus on taking care of the kid for the first year after I give birth. But I'll start working after that. Because I need to make sure I can support my child. Being a single mother is going to be hard. I know that. But now I think it's going to be harder staying with you. Besides, my parents and your mom have said that they would be there to help me. So I'll be okay. I'll make sure to raise him or her properly. I want to help raise our kid too. Really? When you've had no interest in our kid all this time? You would insult me by saying that I look like a sea lion when my stomach became bigger? You never even bothered to learn about raising a child. You would look annoyed when I didn't feel well. You never worried about me or our child. They say men take longer to realize they're actually going to be a father. It's so annoying that you only know information like that. Don't use knowledge that only benefits you to get what you want. I promise that I'm going to change. I swear that I'm going to make you and our child's well-being my priority. You've never done anything this whole time, so I really can't believe your words right now. I'll contact you again about the divorce after I hire a lawyer. I'm so sorry, Christina. Please, I really feel terrible about what I did. If you're gone, I won't have anything left. I realized that these past few days. I experienced firsthand how important your presence in my life is. You'll be fine as long as you have someone to do the household chores for you perfectly. Basically, all you need to do is hire a maid. You have no right to have a family. That's why you don't need me either. That's not true. I want to have a family because it's you, Christina. I want to care for you because I love you. I don't think you'd tell someone you love to do the cleaning when they're nauseous with a fever. You went out drinking while leaving your pregnant and sick wife at home. I don't need a husband or father who isn't going to care for my health. Don't you think someone like that is useless in my life? My husband and I got a divorce. It wasn't a lot, but I got my share of the assets too. My husband kept insisting he didn't want a divorce until the end, but both my parents and my mother-in-law, as well as the friends around us, were on my side. It seems like everyone around him lectured him too, and he realized how terrible he had been to me. But just because he realized his mistakes doesn't mean I plan on fixing things with him. He's still the father of my child, so I'm going to get child support from him. And, of course, I'll allow him to see his child. His relationship with me is over, but I can only hope that he'll be a good father to our kid. A few weeks after the divorce, I successfully gave birth. I had a healthy baby girl, whom I am thankful for every single day. Of course, it's hard raising a newborn, but thanks to the support from the people around me, I'm getting by okay. I know life is only going to get harder once I start working, but still, I'm going to do everything I can to make my daughter live a happy life making sure to never take the kindness from the people around me for granted. I'm going to do what I can on my own, never forget how grateful I am, and raise my daughter as best as I can. I want to show my daughter that she's being graced, surrounded by everyone's love.